Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Goranga, hey. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hey Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hey, hmm. hey, how am I, am I, Hare, hey, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, how am I, am I, Hare, Hare. Goranga Hey Goranga Hey Ram Ram Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Hey, go wrong. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Ram, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hey, go wrong. Rama Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Goranga, Hare Ram, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Govinda, Jai Jai, Gopal, Jai Jai, Hare Hare, Hare Govinda, Jai Jai, Gopal, Jai Jai, Radha Ramana Hari, Govinda Jai Jai. Hey, as we say, Radha Ramana Hari, Govinda Jai Jai. Govinda Jai Jai, Gopal Jai Jai. Govinda Jai Jai, Gopal Jai Jai Radha Ramana Hari, Govinda Jai Jai Hey! Shri Shri Radha Ramana Hari, Govinda Jai Jai Hari Bho, Hari Bho, Hari Bho, Kar Hari Bho, Hari Bho, Nithai Ghor, Hari Bho, Hari Bho, Hari Bho, Kar Hari Bho, Riva, 
ध्याय ध्याय प्रभु भान प्रभु भान प्रभु भान ध्याय प्रभु भान ध्याय ध्याय प्रभु भान प्रभु भान प्रभु भान ध्याय प्रभु भान प्रभु भान ध्याय ध्याय प्रभु भान कोर प्रेमानंदी हरि 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 बोल सिर प्रभु भान की ध्याय थैंक यू Prabhupada said, Madanga makes the kirtan. <laughs> of course, Lord Chaitanya did kirtan with no cartels and no madanga. They just sometimes they would just clap <laughs> for the madanga. No madanga is an incarnation of Lord Balaram, or he's an incarnation of the flute. Because when Krishna was in the spiritual world, he decided to come as Lord Chaitanya. So he told the flute, "I won't need you in this incarnation." <laughs> so the flute was crying. So the flute thought, "I have to figure out some way to come." So he transformed into a mridanga. <laughs> yeah, it's it's in the uh, and I would read Mahatmya by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He explains. Uh, and it makes sense because in other references we understand that Lord Balaram appears as the paraphernalia of the Lord in his different leelas to assist the Lord. So the flute is also a manifestation of Balaram and so is the Mridanga in that sense. Mm -hmm. there is, do you know the verses for glorification of Mridanga? There's two of them. There's some devotees, you know? Yeah, both of them? One, okay. Can you recite it? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, so Madanga is very dear to the devotees. <laughs> okay, so... We're on chapter 8 of Bhagavad Gita, text number 16, which is one of the more powerful verses in the chapter. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Abramana Abrahma Bhuvanar Loka Purna Arvit Arvartina Arjuna Mamupetya to Kaunteya Purna Janmana Vidyate Abrahma Bhuvanar Loka Purna avartir avartir Purna avarti nor jana Mamupetia tu kaunteya Purna janma navidyate Abrahmana bhuvanar loka Purna avartu nor juna Mamu Petya to Kunteya Purna Janma Navidyate
Varna Janma Navidyate. Any of the ladies want to try? Mm -hmm. Brahma Bhuvanath, up to the Brahma Loka planet. Loka, the planetary system. Puna, again, Avartina, returning. Arjuna, O Arjuna, Mum, unto me. Upetya, arriving. Two, but Kunteya, O son of Kunti, Puna Janma, rebirth, na, never, vidyate, takes place. Mm -hmm. Krishna is continuing from the previous verse, which we spoke on Tuesday, that those who go back to the spiritual world, giving up this temporary world of miseries, uh, never come back again to this material world. Now he says, from the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest, all are places of misery wherein repeated birth and death take place. But one who attains to my abode, O son of Kunti, never takes birth again. Mm -hmm. Of all kinds of yogis, karma yogi, jnana yogi, hatha yogi, eventually have to attain devotional service in bhakti yogi, bhakti yoga, or Krishna consciousness, before they can go to the Krishna's transcendental abode and never return. Those who attain the highest material planets, the planets of the demigods, are again subjected to repeated birth and death. A person on earth are elevated to higher planets, people on higher planets such as Brahmaloka, Chandraloka and Indraloka fall down to earth. The practice of sacrifice called Panchagya, Panchagi, Vidya, recommended in the Chandogya Upanishad, enables one to achieve Brahmaloka. But if on Brahmaloka one does not cultivate Krishna consciousness, he then must return to the earth. Those who progress in Krishna consciousness to the higher planets are gradually elevated to higher and higher planets at the same time of the universal de de devastation and are transferred to the eternal spiritual kingdom. Sridhar Swami, in his commentary on Bhagavad Gita, quotes this verse, Brahmana sahate sarve samprapte prati sanchare parasyante kritatmanaha pavishyanti parampadam when there, is when there is devastation of this material universe, Brahma and his devotees, who are constantly engaged in Krishna consciousness, are all transferred to the spiritual universe and to specific spiritual planets according to their desires. Umagyan timirandasya ginajana salakaya chaksuun militam yena tasmai shri gurave maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stavritam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadanti Swam Padanti Kam Namaum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamini Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya De Sitarine Panchakopa Tarubis Chakri Pasindu Pe Eva Chapatitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadat Har Sivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare we have those who practice some form of spirituality on different levels. And they're known as different categories of yogis. So you have karma yogis, those who work 
in devotion and offer the results, some of the results of their activities to the Supreme. Uh, they are motivated by some material gain, and but because they have some connection with the Lord, they give some of that results of that material gain in service of the Lord. And it's called karma yoga. <laughs> then you have the jnanis. Um, they're motivated by uh, the desire to free themselves from all material suffering. So they perform the Eightfold Mystic Yoga practice, mostly through uh, pranayama and various types of meditation upon the, upon the Lord in the heart, or simply meditating on um, the difference between matter and spirit. Then you have the uh, yogis, they're, they're more like the mystic yogis, who uh, they have powers, they can manipulate the material energy. They have, they can fly through the air, they can take birth in, they can take bath in one holy place and submerge themselves in the water and then come up at another holy place which is thousand miles away in the same day. Uh, Prabhupada talks about one friend of his who had a, who his father was a yogi and he would go with him to take bath and he would merge himself in the water and then he'd be gone. He'd be in a thousand miles away because there are many holy places like that. So that's mystic power, becoming lighter than the lightest, becoming uh, what we say heavier than the heaviest, that's also becoming able to become smaller than the smallest. You can they can travel through keyholes. You can lock a yogi in a in a complete solid box with chains around it and then he can get out without opening the box. <laughs> so of course there was there's also people who know that science who are materialists, they're called magicians too. So there is a science on how to manipulate the material energy because material energy is mutable. That's why it's always changeable. So just like if you know, if you know the art, you can take your hands and you can put it right through this desk and come out the other side and then pull it back out. And your hand is still in one shape like that. They know how to separate the molecules because material energy is just a series of molecules that are in different forms of density. So by changing the density, you can manipulate. And I've seen it done also. There were people who were coming to our community in New Vrindavan. They were teaching the devotees to walk on hot coals. So they have these hot burning coals, and then you walk on them, and your feet doesn't get burned mm -hmm. like that. And so there's so many mystic powers. Krishna describes them in the... Uh, 11th Canto Bhagavatam, there's 10, I'm sorry, there's 8 primary mystic powers and 10 secondary mystic powers. But after Krishna describes each of the mystic powers, he says, give it all up and become a devotee. <laughs> he just wants to show you that these things, although so fantastic, really you can't achieve the supreme by them, nor can they really give you any happiness. So the yogis, they get the pleasure of manipulating the material energy like that. Like that. Prabhupada talks about Prapti City, which the yogis, they do that a lot. There was that one yogi in South India. He just recently left his body, maybe about eight or nine years ago. And he, he could just, you know, go like this and then he has gold. Or he can meditate on some place and then take that object from that place and bring it to where it is, he is. Prabhupada talks about, you know, there was one yogi who came to his father's house when he was there, when he was young. Uh, he, he asked his, he told his father, ask for something. So his father said, you bring me some uh, pomegranates from Kabur, Kabur, some place in the Middle East. So the yogi said, all right, go in the next room. So he went into the next room, and on the table there was a, a branch of pomegranates laying on the table. <laughs> so, you know, so they have this power. But it's all material. <laughs> you know, so it looks good. And sometimes these yogis, they become spiritual leaders and then attract people to them and saying that they're God. 
where they have, you know, the incarnation of God. And they have followers that they can enchant with all their magic. But still, now the jnanis, the karmis, and the yogis, they all have desire. The karmis, they want to enjoy material energy. The yogis, they want to free themselves from material suffering. And the karma and the yogis want to manipulate the material energy. But the devotees, they don't have any material desire. All they want to do is please the Lord in devotional service. So unless one comes to that stage of wanting to serve the Lord for the pleasure of the Lord, then one has to continue to take birth in this material Lord. So that's why there's so many levels of the material existence. You have the higher plants. And it's mentioned here, you have Brahma Loka, Chandra Loka, Indra Loka, there's Tapa Loka, there's Maha Loka, and Jana Loka. So there, there are so many planetary systems up where there's yogis and great tapasis living on these planets who are very elevated in spiritual consciousness. But they're still not bhakti yogis. They may be elevated with some element of bhakti, but still they have some, some desire to enjoy something material. So, therefore, that's why Krishna says, <clears throat> and this he's making this point, wherever there's birth and death, there's, there's suffering. <clears throat> so, within the three realms, there are 14 planetary systems and divided into three categories of middle, lower, and upper planet. We're on the middle planets. Middle means some suffering and some pleasure. Of course, that changes in proportion to the karmic of the planet. When people become more sinful, it becomes like a lower planet. And when people become more pious, it becomes like an upper planet. So even you see in this world, in different places of the world, people are more pious and more, and people are more sinful. You so you see the a certain element of differences in the, the atmosphere based on their on the piety or impiety of the people. But Therefore, Krishna, one can even elevate themselves even to the highest planet, Brahma Loka. But still, even Brahma has to leave his body at one point. He may live a lot of a long time compared to the earth years, but still, his life is also temporary. So Krishna is making that statement that anything that's temporary is miserable, because it's it's contrary to our nature. We are eternal. That's our nature. When we experience temporary, we actually experience something which is contrary to our nature. That's why the, the desire, the fear of death is natural because we don't die. <laughs> death is not part of the soul. And so that, that innate uh, element of not wanting to die is natural because we don't die. <laughs> We just don't die, but we, but because we identify with the body, we think we die. We think we take birth like that. So therefore, because we're in the wrong consciousness, we experience all these miseries like that. So that's why Krishna says, from the highest planet down to the lowest, places of birth and death. Why? Because... Uh, one, it's not natural to die, it's not natural to take birth. It's not natural to get old, it's not natural to have disease. You know, these things are foreign to our existence, but because we're in the world like that, just like if you're in the prison house, you know, your, your desire is to be free, but you're not because you're locked up. Your desire is to... Uh, to experience a lot of things in life, but you can't because you're you're confined. Your desire is uh, what well, you will you be. You, you may have so many desires, but you can't fulfill them because the place doesn't allow it. So in the same way, we have desires to live eternally. We do have desires to be always happy. We have be desires to be free from ignorance and be always in knowledge, but we can't because we're in this world. This world doesn't allow that. That's why it's a place of suffering. It's a place of misery. So therefore, Krishna says, ultimately, come back to me in devotion. And one who does, then he, he frees themselves from all misery and, 
and stays in the spiritual world eternally in loving devotional service, which is the environment of our nature. We are spiritual by nature, but we're in, an, in, an, in a foreign atmosphere. You take a fish, you put it on the water, and you give it a nice f f fish tuxedo and a, a fish house, and a, you know, becomes fishy <laughs> after a while. <laughs> so you can you can change, you can give the living entities all kinds of material comforts, but it cannot satisfy them because it's not natural. Therefore, only when we come back to our home in the spiritual world are we in our, we can we can we fulfill our desires perfectly and completely. So while we're here, we have to, as Prabhupada said, you have to make the best use of a bad bargain. You went shopping, you went downtown Ljubljana, and you went to the store and you bought something. And you took it home, and you realize it's not what you wanted, but you couldn't exchange it because it said no exchange on it. So now you're stuck with it. So you have to figure out how to use it in some way. So this is it. We get a body. We're not supposed to have a body, but we have one. <laughs> and so that's a bad bargain. <laughs> you went to the wrong store. <laughs> some of us got one kind of body, and some of us got another kind of body. We all went shopping in different places. <laughs> so now we're stuck with it. So now how to use it? Well, if you try to enjoy it, then you'll just, it becomes a, a big burden, it's all because it's not meant to be enjoyed. It's just like <clears throat> you might try to, you, may, you might try to cut a piece of paper with your fingernail. <laughs> But the fingernails are not meant for cutting paper. <laughs> so you need a scissor or some kind of sharp instrument to do it. So in this world, we're trying, we have a material body, so we have to use it for what it's meant to be used for. And that is to engage it in devotional service. And then gradually uh, get free from the uh, elements of material limitations. Because material life means limitation. Spiritual life means unlimited. So that's devotional service. So when, when we engage in devotional service, then gradually we come back to who we actually are, and then actually we qualify ourselves to go back to the spiritual world. So while we're here, we have to engage in devotional service. That's the, that's the, the whole process. And of course, devotional service takes on different forms through chanting, hearing, Serving, remembering, worshiping, praying, like that, like that. So all these different forms are ways we can use our time and energy to serve the Lord in, in Krishna consciousness, like that. So, but we have to remember that we are in a foreign place. <clears throat> if we remember that, then we won't try to be comfortable here. That's the idea. Because if we think this place is okay, or I should try to be comfortable here, then we lose our focus on who we are and where we are actually can find real and lasting happiness. We always have to remember that this world is miserable. <laughs> and suffering is always right around the corner <laughs> at every moment. Everything we do in life can cause you suffering, no matter what it is. You can eat and choke on your food and die, you know. <laughs> it happens, too. Yeah, people do that. <laughs> well, you, you have some experience? You know somebody? <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just everything. This is the way the world is, you know. Everything you do, you can walk down the stairs and fall and die, you know. <laughs> it's just the way the life is, you know. <clears throat> Just to, this world is full of dangers, and it's just meant to give you trouble. That's all. Like that. And other people, they're also meant to give you trouble. <laughs> it's just the way life is. If you find a good friend in life, that's cool. That's pretty rare, but generally, that's hard to find. <clears throat> but if you find, you can find it in devotional circles, though. That, that's there because devotees 
are naturally friends to everyone. So this world, we should never think this world's a nice place or try to adjust the material energy to make it better. We do a little bit of adjusting to improve our devotional life, but we don't really try to adjust it to make it more comfortable. How many people die sleeping in bed? You get a nice big bed, it's about, you know, one meter high off the floor. And you roll over and you fall out and that's it. That's the last thing you did. <laughs> and there are people who fall out of bed and die. It's just like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. So, you know, anything you do in this world, there is, there's always a danger or some kind of misery that it can't happen, anything. It's just the way this world is. Why is it like that? Krishna said, I did it. <laughs> so sometimes you want to find a person who caused all these problems. It's Krishna. And the word, he actually explains why he did it. He says, because I love you. That's why. I don't want you to try to be happy here. So I've made this place in such a way that you can't be happy. So you get tired of this place and you want to come back to me. So that's his mercy. You know, who who are the people that suffer the most in this world? It's people who have the most. <laughs> it's the the suicide rate is highest amongst affluent people, not poor people. And that's a fact. People who have because they have attained everything that they aspired for, but they're miserable. <laughs> Some one of the most the top one of the most topmost families in India, one of the most wealthiest families in India, their son committed suicide when he was a teenager. They were shocked. They couldn't understand it. They came to him, they went around to all holy men trying to find out what is the answer. They came to our devotees and spoke to some of our leaders also. Why is it? You know, he had everything in life. What what and then we explain, it's just these things are external to, to, to real happiness. Real happiness is the soul's nature when it connects with Krishna. Happiness is the connection with Krishna. You're cold, and so you're sitting in a place that's cold. So when you light a fire or you, get, you turn on the heat, you get warm. So in the same way, we want to get away from the suffering, get closer to Krishna. By getting closer to Krishna, we become happy because he's happy by nature. <laughs> like that. So that's that's how life works like that. So the message is Krishna saying, don't stay here because this place is just meant for suffering. So and you have a you're in you're in a good situation in one life, and in the next life you may be in a lesser situation. Karanam guna san gosyo sarasajona san basu. So sometimes you take birth as a bug in a rug, or you may take birth as a thug somewhere else. <laughs> or, or, you know, you could take birth in any situation from the highest planet to the lowest planet. There are 8,400,000 species of life, and they exist on all these planetary systems throughout the universe throughout all the universes. And so you and you don't know, no one knows where they're going to go the next life. But devotees do, because devotees are making engaged in devotional service. But in the principle, no one knows. Everyone is trying to adjust this place to make it better, to be happier, to find some kind of situation. But it's like... It's like being on the Titanic ship. You heard of the Titanic, right? So you're on the lower deck, and then you saw the iceberg first, and you know we're about to hit the iceberg. The people on the upper deck, they're, they're having a party, and they're not aware of what's going on. So the people on the lower deck, they're aware of the, that soon we're going to hit an iceberg and we're going to all you know, sink into the icy waters and die. And uh, but the people on the upper deck, they're dancing, enjoying themselves like that. But both 
upper deck and lower deck will will eventually hit the waters. <laughs> it's a matter of time. So the idea is don't try to change seats on the Titanic. <laughs> you think I'm on the lower deck, I'll go to the upper deck. It's better up there. <laughs> It'll go down also. So that's the message. The message is don't try to adjust this material world in such a way is you can't because there's no way you can make your situation any better. Because birth is there, death is there, old age is there, disease is there, and the miseries of material energy are always there. Adi Atmik, Adi Baltic, Adi Daivik. So just try to become Krishna conscious, that's all. And if you do that, then you push back the material miseries simply by your your advancement in spiritual life. That's all. Okay, so yeah. Uh, I, when that Titanic ship crashed, some people survived. There's one guy, he drank two bottles of gin and he became so hot inside that when he hit the icy water, he was able to survive. <laughs> he knew he was going to die, so he just drank as much liquor as he could. And that came from, he built this heat inside of him that was so hot that somehow he survived. I read some stories about, you know, actually what happened with the Titanic. It's a really amazing story. Eight people died just building that boat. Just to, just to build that boat was so colossal that eight people lost their lives just in constructing that boat. They thought that was the most invisible boat that they had ever, invincible boat that they ever made. But Krishna said, no, no, not like that. <laughs> yeah. So, of course, there were, you know, there were over 1,000 people on that boat. <laughs> over 1,000. Because everybody wanted to get on that first voyage from, from London to America, I think it went. Yeah. Southampton, yeah. Southampton is a is a place in in the UK. Yeah, it's on the base of the UK. I can tell you a funny little story. Many years ago, we went on this uh, voyage. It was organized by Bhakti Chiru Maharaj, actually. All glories to Shiro Bhakti Chiru Maharaj. And we, we went from country to country on this cruise, on this ocean liner. And there was, we were 250 devotees, and, but there was about 1,000 people on the boat. So it was a luxury liner. And we, we stopped in different places, and we did Harinam in Spain, in France, and in other places. So when we first were about getting onto the boat, uh, we, we, t we took off from Southampton. <laughs> So one of our senior devotees, mm -hmm. he said, "Yes, we're taking off from Southampton." So did the, uh, so did the. What was that? The Titanic took off from there. And just to let you know another thing, that this boat has a sister ship. In other words, another boat just like that. And one year ago, it crashed in Italy on voyage. <laughs> so. That was the opening address we got when we, before we got on the boat. <laughs> we were on the ocean for a, w a week, boy, and a lot of devotees got seasick. Not a lot, of some did. Uh, the last day I almost got seasick, but just being on the ocean, Prabhupada says, it's just not natural because we're land animals. And now you stay there for one day, and after the second day you think, where's the land, you know? But it was nice as far as preaching. We did Harinam in, in so many different cities around, and we, we went sailing this way and that way. But the idea is that, you know, that, that this material world is like one ocean of material suffering. And any time, no matter where you are, no matter what you are, no matter who you are, no matter how many uh, arrangements you make, you can't save yourself from suffering or for calamities. Calamities are just part of this world. And therefore, it says that one who surrenders to Krishna, Krishna becomes their protector. When you're protected by Krishna, you're protected. 
when you're protected by your own arrangements, you're in a very, what we say, precarious situation. Your own arrangements can't save you. You should take protection because that's natural, but at the same time we should know that it's only Krishna that can save us. Like that. This is the nature of the material world. Padam padam ya vi padam is the verse. It's just a place of suffering. Okay, of course devotees are not in the material world. We have one foot in the spiritual world. Maybe still we're dragging that other leg. Still stuck in the mud. <laughs> trying to pull it out. <laughs> it's like trying to dance without, without a merdanga. <laughs> but still... We have hope that we can extricate ourselves away from this uh, entire material turmoil. Like that. And that's the goal of life, to come back to Krishna and loving devotional service. Okay, so any questions? Yes. Hare Krishna. In the commentary, it was said that um, after annihilation, Lord Brahma gets liberation and his followers. Is this always the case? Lord Brahma gets liberation? Yes. And in other places it says that he, he may also get Brahman realization, and, but, but then he also has to come back. As long as there is any material desires. Prabhupada gives different interests, different explanations of Lord Brahma's situation. Uh, sometimes he said Brahma is a pure devotee and sometimes he says Brahman is not a pure devotee. So, but there are so many Brahmins, so we don't know which Brahma he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but it also mentions in the third canto, in the 33rd chapter, verse number 9 or 10, something like that, that it says that at the end of the annihilation, Brahma goes back to the spiritual world, but then because he, he has material desires, he again comes back. He goes to the, the not to Goloka Vrindavan or Vaikunti, he goes to the outer realms of the spiritual existence that are beyond the material world. So that's mentioned there. So when, Brahm, when Harani Kashipu asked for immortality from Lord Brahma, Brahma said, I can't give you that because I also have to die. So when he does die, if, if, he is, if he's a pure devotee, then he goes back. And he, if he's not, then he comes again, back again in some form. Thank you. Yeah, so there are different Lord Brahmas. <laughs> Not all the Brahmas are pure devotees. <laughs> Any other questions? Hare Krishna. Uh, to realize that we are not this body, is, it is enough just to think uh, theoretically in some situations that uh, repeating to ourselves that we are not this body or we need to have some... Uh, experience or something well that's only part one part two is to realize who you are knowing who you're not is the beginning of understanding uh, getting rid of ignorance but knowledge comes when you know who you are and then jivar surupai krishna and nityadas you are part and parcel of krishna you're internally related to krishna in loving devotional service that's your identity and then each of us have an identity within that spiritual identity, and that is called our swarup, our actual transcendental form in the spiritual world. So there's different levels of understanding who you are. First, you have to understand that you're part and parcel of Krishna, that you're his eternal associate, eternal servant, and then you, uh, then you also understand the next stage is who are you, what is your form, what is your relationship with Krishna, what is your, uh, where are you? Do you go to, go to Vaikuntha or do you go to Vrindavan? So these are higher levels, or complete levels of our, of the knowledge of our actual identity. 
But preliminary helps us to, to become detached from this world. So preliminary understanding of who you're not, I'm not this body, helps you to become detached. Well, if I'm not this body, why am I trying to enjoy this bodily pleasure? That's ridiculous. Because it's not, I'm, I'm not this body. <laughs> so that helps you to get detached from, from the material energy. Okay. I'm a nobody. <laughs> no, you're somebody. No, I'm a nobody. Okay, so anything else? Okay, thank you. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai.